the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with all of you. As our dear sister Pauline has died with the Lord, so may now she live with him in glory. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Pauline, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Be kind of be seated now as we will hear God's word. First from the Old Testament, read to us by Terry. A reading from Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. Here on Mount Zion, the Lord Almighty will prepare a banquet for all the nations of the world, a banquet of the richest food and the finest wine. Here he will suddenly remove the cloud of sorrow that has been hanging over all the nations. The sovereign Lord will destroy death forever. He will wipe away the tears from everyone's eyes. He will take away the disgraces people have suffered throughout the world. The Lord himself has spoken. When it happens, everyone will say, he is our God. We have put our trust in him, and he has rescued us. He is the Lord. And um, now we are happy and joyful because he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
Our second leader is Andrew. Our reading from the New Testament, um, uh, Theologians 4, 13, 18. Our friends, we want you to know the truth about those who have died so that you will not be sad, as are those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will take back with Jesus those who have died believing in him. What we are teaching you now is the Lord's teaching. We who are alive on the day the Lord comes will not go ahead of those who have died. There will be a shout of command, the archangel's voice, the sound of God's trumpet, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died believing in Christ will, will rise to li life first. Then we who are living at the time will be gathered up along with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with, them, with the Lord. So then encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Please now stand for the gospel. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. This morning, we gather in this house of the Lord as a family, not just the loving, immediate family of Pauline, but the family of the church, the family of our parish. And we come to do what we do at the most difficult time every human experience, the death of a loved one. We gather as a family to love and support one another, to pray, to receive hope and consolation from the prayers that we offer. And today we gather to say farewell to a beautiful gift, a beautiful gift that was given to this world on November 29th, 1940. A gift to you, of course, but a gift to the world. For every human being born is a gift. A gift of God to those who love them and they love. A gift to this world. And so are you. You too are God's gift to this world. And that gift one day 
will go back to God, the God who has given us the gift to begin with. The very first book of the Bible, Genesis, in the fifth chapter, we come across a man whose name was Enoch. And in Hebrew, the name Enoch means dedicated one. And I think one of the most profound and beautiful things ever written about a fellow human being was written about the man Enoch in the Bible. It says that he was a daily companion with the Lord God. A daily companion. What a beautiful thought to be known as a companion with God. Someone to walk with life. Someone to share bread with. That's what the word companion means. To have that intimate, loving relationship with God. And there's a wonderful legend told about the man Enoch. That every night in the cool of the evening, he and God would get together. And they would talk about many things as only friends know how to do. And as they talked through the power of God, they would walk throughout the earth. As the years went on, the talks would become deeper and their walks would become longer. And as one particular evening, as they always did, they got together and they started to talk about the nature of love and what love is and how is it that only human beings can experience love. And that the more we love, the more we can love. We can never run out of love. And the more love that we have, the more human we become the less we forget about ourselves and we live our lives for the sake of other people. And in that, we become happy and joyful. And as they talked all about love, they walked further and further and further out into the great universe. And at the end of that long, long discussion, God turned to Enoch and said, My friend, you're now closer to my house than you are your own. Why don't you come home with me? And Enoch said yes. And he walked with God back home. Your devoted wife and dear mother and grandmother and friend, Pauline took that very same walk with God on August 4th. And after 79 years of life here on earth, she heard the words of a friend, it's time to come home. And she did. She closed her eyes to this earthly life and opened them up before God. And I think this morning for us, the important word is home. Home is the place where we're first taught love and how to love. Home is the place where we're first given and taught faith in God. Home is a place of security and peace. It's the place where we are truly who we are with all the masks removed. If you want to see someone as they really are, see them in their home. And as wonderful as any life on earth can be at times, with all of its happiness and joys, this is not our home. We don't belong here. We belong in a far better place. A place where there's no more sorrow or tears or sadness. A place where God created us for to begin with. But God created us not just for earthly life. If he did, what a cruel trick this would be. But God created us for himself. That all our longings that we have here on earth, for as we know, the most wonderful and happiest day of our life is always something missing. There's always something just not right. There's always something more that we long for. We long for the presence of God. We long to be in his presence. For God created us for himself. And so the life that we have here is a gift. None of us asks to be born. It was given to us and the love of our parents. And we live a certain amount of years. For some, the years are long, while others, the years are short. And it's not important, I think, how many years we get to live here. What's more important is how do we live out those years? How do we use that gift that God gave us? But at the end of our earthly life, we will stand before God by ourselves. And I think he's going to ask us just one little question. What did you do with the gift of life I gave you? That's all. He's not going to ask us, what was the size of the house you lived in? Or the type of cars you drove? Or 
what little symbols you have on your shirt over here, or certainly he's not going to ask you how much money you left on earth. But he will ask us, when I was hungry, did you give me something to eat? When I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? When I was ill and in prison, did you come and visit? For what you did to the least of my people, you did to me. Very personal. And so today, through the tears of our sadness, we know that Pauline's been in the presence of God. For she lived a life that was worth living. The joy of her heart. The dance of her soul. The joy of her family. The love of her life, Ara. 58 years, and, and thank you for your example of family life and marriage and beauty and commitment. So today, we say farewell, never goodbye. For we know that death is not the end of us, but rather it's the birth to that eternal life, that life that was pledged to us by Christ upon the cross. He died for us so that we could live in eternity. And so as we continue on in our life here on earth, we ask God to give us the strength to do the right thing, the noble thing, the good thing, like Pauline did throughout her life. In the last years of her life, the great silence. She spoke to the Lord heart to heart. He welcomed her, please, very quickly to himself. But one day, you and I, we will take that very same walk with God. And one day, we too will hear the words, it's time to come home. And we will. We will leave this earth and go home to God. May we hear the very same words I'm quite sure Pauline heard on August 4th. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And so let us now stand and ask the Lord to hear our prayers. On the day of her baptism, Pauline received the light of Christ. May she now have that light to bring her over the waters of death into the eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pauline received at the table of the Lord, our Lord's sacred body and blood. May she now receive and be invited to the feast of the Lamb in heaven for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves that the gift of life and faith given to us will be lived in accordance to God's will. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have helped us and good to us here on earth. May they receive the reward of that goodness. We pray to the Lord. O oh, good and gracious Father, hear the prayers of the family who stand before you, whose lives are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ. And grant to them the light and happiness of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated. So, my dear friends, let us now stand and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of man. Praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Pauline, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation. 
so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. That those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed and not ended. And so when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clean. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending out your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. From the history of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Pauline, whom you have called from this world unto yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our beloved patroness, St. Margaret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. So now we stand together as the family of God to pray the prayer that Jesus our brother taught us. So we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wake the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask you please keep the social distancing between you and the person in front of you. And um, if you could please remove your mask before you come to me to receive Holy Communion. 
and the church invites those Catholics, sons and daughters who are practicing Catholics and are able to receive our Holy Lord and Holy Communion to please come to the altar. And those of you who cannot now receive Holy Communion, and those who are watching on live stream, we now pray the act of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, 
whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our dear sister Pauline may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. With our faith now in Jesus Christ, we must go and reverently bury the remains of our dear sister. And we pray with confidence to God, in whose sight all creation lives, that we will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our sister, and command that her soul be numbered among the blessed. May God grant unto her a merciful judgment, deliverance from death and pardon of sin. May Christ, who is the Good Shepherd, carry her home to be at peace with God our Father, and may she rejoice forever in the presence of the eternal King and the company of all the saints. Let us pray. Into your hands, O Father of mercies, we commend our sister in a sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with Christ on the very last day. And we give you thanks for all the many blessings which you bestowed upon Pauline in this life. For they are signs to us, Lord, of your goodness and the fellowship that we share with the saints in Christ Jesus. O God of mercy, turn toward us now and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants. Help us remain here on earth to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith. Fill that great day when we shall all meet again in Christ to be with you and with our sister forever through Christ our Lord, amen. And so my dear sister, I commend you now to Almighty God, and I entrust you to him who first gave you to us, so that you may return to your true home. And so may the radiant company of the angels come out to meet you. May the assembly of the apostles welcome you. May the victorious army of white-robed martyrs meet you on your way. May the glittering throng of holy men gather around you, and may the glorious choir of holy women receive you. May all the patriarchs and the prophets and fold you in the embrace of blessed peace. May St. Joseph and St. Paul, your patron, raise you high. And may Holy Mary, the Mother of God, lovingly turn her eyes toward you. And then, gentle and joyful, may Christ Jesus appear before you to assign you a place forever among those who stand in his presence. May Jesus, the Son of the living God, lead you now into paradise. And may he, the Good Shepherd, recognize you as one of his own. May he cleanse you of all your sins and offer you a seat at his right hand in the company of the saints. And may you see your Redeemer face to face and basking in his glory forever. May you now experience the truth revealed in all of its fullness. And there, in that most holy place, may you, Pauline, wait for us until we too are called to join you in the happiness of that kingdom where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her soul, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her, and may she rest in peace. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So before we all go our, our separate ways, I'd like to thank all of you for being here this morning. I know how very important it is for the family to know of your love and your prayers and your support, not just for this day, but indeed for the weeks and months and the years to come. And to the family, thank you for sharing your mom with us here in the parish all those many years. She was at the Alterosa Society that she loved and, and all wonderful people have wonderful memories of your mom so, and your wife. So thank you and you know, many years ago there's an old expression that the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So I can tell you, you're a beautiful family and, and keep the faith and all the beautiful things that your mom taught you and, and know that one day we'll all be together again as a family. So until that day, our greatest gift to Pauline is our continuation of our prayers. We continue to pray for her, and she prays for us. Because you know, a mother's love is a blessing, but a mother's job is never finished, not even to eternity. So she'll be overlooking all of you and all those who have been good to her. And so may God bring us peace, and now in peace let us go and bring her to her final place of rest.